Welcome back, cadets. Uh, in this video, we're going to create our project. Uh, we'll be exploring Visual Studio, uh, some good things to know about it uh, and how we work. So I'll be opening Visual Studio here. And um, this is how it looks uh, like the first time uh, if you're opening up Visual Studio 2022, which is the latest version right now, might update in the future. To the left here, we will see recent projects that have been opened. Right now, there's none. And here we have some options. Uh, don't b bother with most here. Let's just keep it simple and focus on these two. Here we can open a folder where we have a project if uh, we downloaded it, for example. And here we can create a new one. So we're going to click here. And then we see two things here. We have two sections. To the left, we will have recent project templates. Uh, things we have chosen in the past will start to show up here. And we can pin those so the most important ones will come up top. And we'll see examples of that as we move along. Now to the right, we see a lot of templates and this can get overwhelming. Uh, so what I recommend is we're just going to start a console app. For all languages, we'll put C Sharp. Um, for this, our platforms, we can leave it be. But for project types, I'm going to select console. And you can see there's so many kinds. So let's just select console. Then we only have two uh, choices here. What a relief. But you will often see this kind of identical choice but this one has .NET Framework. Now, this is an older framework that was only for Windows. Uh, in the, with the time, they have moved to, I think it was since 2014 or that, we have moved to something called .NET Core, but they've changed the name a lot, so they just call it .NET. And then you see, they just say .NET here. And this is cross-platform. So it can run on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Um, and often, uh, servers and that, we're running uh, Linux because it's cheaper more lightweight. So let's choose this one, console app, click next. We see here location, this is the default place where once you've installed it for uh, Visual Studio for the first time, it chooses this location. And you can stick with that if you like. Uh, for me, I'm gonna go to the desktop, um, much easier uh, to locate. And then we see two sections here. We have a solution name and we have project name. For now, to keep this simple, I'm gonna say a solution name is just a container where we can have many different projects. Uh, and uh, for the first one, I'm going to call it uh, a split smart because that's the first kind of small application we're going to be building. But the solution name, I'm going to be calling, uh, let's call it uh, .NET edits. Uh, and you see where it's going to be created. And just stop and there will be a, a container folder called dotted cadets and then the project split smart so you click next now this is how it looks um, for the first time uh, depends on which version you have installed there's dot nine there's older ones i'm going to use dot net eight because it is long term supported uh, this might change eventually but most companies are using eight and lower so i'm going to stick to that uh, we don't need the the newer updates and constructs at this time and uh, for now i'm going to we're not going to select anything we're going to leave it as b but soon i'm going to explain this one but first let's create create let's uh, minimize the browser we don't need that let's open up so this is how it looks um, we'll open it first time and we can see to the right here is something called solution explorer and here, in the rest of the screen, we have the editor. And this is where we're going to write our code. And um, yeah, this is where the magic happens. But to the right, we have our organization. Now, most editors that I use, uh, we have this to the left. So I'm going to move this there by clicking here, clicking in the button, then moving. And we can see we have these icons here. I'm going to take this one farthest to the left. And it puts it there. And now this is more consistent with my other editors. I don't know why they have it in the right. Uh, and now it's easier for me to work. And then we come and see here. There are a few things I would like to do before we get started. And we see there's an icon down here. It's a purple icon. If I click that, we see we have show completions for lines of code and show completions on new lines. Toggling off that, we'll toggle off both. And toggling on this one, we'll return them both. And I'm going to show you why I'm going to toggle that off. So let's say, don't need to understand the code. Let's just say I want to do something int age equal. And uh, 
Maybe we can just turn it off it's not as fast. The page. There we see. See that grayed out? This is a suggestion that it gives to me. Uh, there is probably mostly correct. If I press tab now, it auto completes it. And this can do a lot for us. Uh, and it's very useful later. But for now, at the beginning, we need to get in the muscle memories. So we need to type out as much as possible. Um, having this kind of shortcut can be detrimental for your, you know, um, to learn the fundamentals. Uh, you don't, you know, you might think that it's always correct, and sometimes it might no, but you didn't know that it was. It said it, so we don't want that. So I'm gonna go here and toggle that off. And now, if I remove this and say in page, we get no help. That doesn't mean the editor doesn't help us. It helps us a lot. You saw just by me typing int, we get a lot of, um, let's call it hard-coded suggestions, templates uh, that we can use. For example, when we want to output text, we could write that entire thing there, console, write line. But you see, we have to make the W big, the L big, uh, or we can just press tab and it auto completes that. So that's pretty nice to have because you might make a typo like this, a small L, and this matters in the world of programming. There, this is a this is not the same as that. This won't work. We see it by those red squiggly lines there under. And if we put our uh, mouse there, we get this tooltip help console does not contain a definition of right line. And there are other things which can help us, uh, especially when we're lazy and developers are lazy, and that's a good thing. If I type CW, we see here a code snippet for console right line. And now if I press tab, it automatically completes it for me, and I can start writing the text here, which needs to be surrounded by these double quotation marks. Hey there. So that's the first thing I want to cover. Uh, we don't want too much help from the AI. We can see up here what this means. It's a comment, so it's never executed. Uh, we can see its color differs from the below. Uh, but for now, we don't need that. We'll cover comments more in depth later. And we saw that there was a star there, but I automatically pressed Control S, which is the hot key in the keyboard for saving. But I can now change this by removing that. And we see the star there. And there are different ways you can save that. You have a button here. Save program, and we see Control plus S, and up here, File, Save Program, Control plus S. I'll be using the keyboard. There we go. Now it's saved and the star is gone. Now, let's cover other things. Sometimes people accidentally close this and they don't know where to find it. So I'm going to do that example. Like, oh, where did I go? It's not there. It's not here. We have a section up here called View, and we see it, Solution Explorer. I press that. It's there. Now you might have a, small, a smaller screen working on a laptop with that. Uh, it would be nice for more space. Uh, then you might go here. Uh, we can tap this out to height. And if I click it, I can do my things here and then press here and it shows. Now my screen is not that small, so I can dock it. Nice. Uh, another thing, let's go to tools up here. Let's go to options. Uh, for future projects when you're creating, you might want a default place to uh, save uh, uh, your projects. So in this section, projects, solutions, locations, we see the default is this source repos. Uh, you can stick with that if you like, but for me, I want the desktop. So I'm gonna go to browse, select desktop here, select folder, and then okay. Now, uh, another thing I'm going to show you, as I told you, a solution is kind of like a container and it can have many different projects. Now we have this first project, SplitSmart, that's our program. I'm going to add another project now. You don't have to do this, I just want to show you something. Uh, if I right click here, add new project. I'm gonna, Now we see the recent project templates console app, I can select that. I can even pin it, so that's nice. Next. And here I'm just going to call it whatever because it's going to be deleted. To that and I'm going to select this checkbox because I wanted to show you this. Do not use top level statements because in the wild we read a lot of code, we will see this kind of format. And you see, these two are very identical in that they both have this console right line hello world, which this one had as well, right? But this one is inside here. And for now, this is a bit complicated. Uh, and uh, when you're starting, it might be hard to understand, but each executable program, that a program that needs to run, for example, in our terminal or 
a mobile app or a desktop app, web app, it needs an entry point. So like when I'm clicking a button uh, to start my computer, the on button, that's the entry point. It clicks that and then it moves from there. So this is our entry point to our program. But it's very cluttered, especially when you're starting out. Uh, that's a lot to take in. Um, and we will explain some of these details later. But for now, most modern languages, uh, and that is why .NET by default has moved to this, it's just so easier to read. This is the entire thing that's covered here. It is inside here in this section. And this is what they call scope. Uh, but while we're here, uh, let's handle one more thing. I just want to show you. So like me, you don't need uh, for future reference. This might not be easy to understand now, and some will understand now, and some will understand it later. But this will cover different subjects. We can move this by coming up here and typing semicolon, and it automatically formats the browse. But let's say you did it the hard way. I went to control Z, control Z to undo, undo. I removed this part. I moved this, and then I came back up here, typed this. Uh, it's done, but then we see, because sometimes when you write code, you might you might see this, that uh, it's not formatted, and then you have to do it. And this isn't so hard. You can mark all of this. And while tab moves this to the right, shift tab moves it to the left. And I can do it again, and it's there, and it's done. But we can simplify our life instead of having to do all this manually. So if I control Z, just to show you where we are. We go up here to Tools, Options. Now, minimize that section, and I go to Text Editor. And there's this section called Code Cleanup. And this said, Run Code Cleanup Profile on Save. I'll check that, press OK. So we see this file has changed, it has a star. Now if I press Control S for saving, it automatically does that for us. So that's what I wanted to show you. Now, we'll clean this up. Console app, I press the Delete button on my keyboard but you can right click and then we'll find remove, which is also del delete. It will be removed, done. Now we're back. Now we're back here to her. And this is where we're gonna move on from the next video. Until next time.